And what you'll see is that we're able to add additional pages to the same file and they're all going to be the same size as our original layout. So I would suggest adding in eight total. So once I've added four, I'm just going to go to my left hand toolbar here and I'm going to select that arrow tool and then I'm going to just drag my Apple Pencil over my options and then I'm going to go back into my upper left hand menu here and I'm going to select that three dot menu and I'm going to select duplicate. And what this does is duplicate everything that I've selected and then I can just take my Apple Pencil and drag it down and I will have um, four additional four additional pages for my layouts. So what I like to do is just kind of like zoom in as I'm working. So if you take your fingers and you um, place them on the screen and you pinch in, you'll zoom out. And then if you pinch out, you will zoom in. So we're gonna be working on this first page here just to kind of get a feel for some of these tools and the different studios. So on the left hand side is your main toolbar and on the right hand side are our studios. We'll be working with quite a few of these different tools. So I just wanna kind of give you an overview of what they are uh, and then give you some ideas on how the studios work over here on the right hand side. What's really nice though is at the very bottom in the lower right hand corner, there's a little question mark. If you tap on that, it will give you the name of all of the different tools and all of the different studios as well as your menus up top. Um, so you have your document menu, which is where we were in originally. This menu allows you to kind of like save, export your files. It'll allow you to place images. And then like what we did originally, it allows you to add additional artboards. You can also add your grid and select snapping. I like to have snapping turned on. You could also just turn it on in the lower left hand corner here. There is a little magnetic icon and that allows you to kind of like snap things in place. It just makes layout much easier. And then right next to that is our edit menu. Um, we'll be working with some of these options, especially the geometry options, which allow you to add, subtract, and blend shapes together. Um, and then of course, all of our copy paste functions are here as well. And then next to that, you'll see these three icons. These icons are our personas. We're currently in the designer persona, which is the affinity designer interface. But if we tap the one in the middle, this is our pixel persona, which allows us to utilize some of the tools that you might have access to in Affinity Photo, which is fantastic. Um, so they are pixel based tools. Um, and then this third option here is our export persona. And this allows you to export all of your pages at once um, as slices. Um, I use this a lot when I'm making stickers. And if you are interested in something like that, um, I'll include a link in the description box to some of my other digital planning classes, specifically ones like how to make digital stickers and things like that on your iPad using Affinity Designer. Um, but I use this a lot when I'm working with um, multiple artboards and files that I want to export really speedily in one go. And this allows me to do that. All right, so I'm going to select my designer persona so that we're back in the designer options. And on the left hand side, we're going to scroll down to our shape tool. Um, right now I have the rectangle option, but if you hold that shape tool down, you'll get a pop up and you'll see all the different options um, of shapes that you can create that are kind of like presets. So let's just select a shape. And then on the right hand side in our studio, we're going to select our color studio and you'll be able to update your color um, fill, which is the inside of the shape and then the color stroke, which is the stroke on the outside. You can choose to not have a stroke by tapping on that stroke color and going down into your quick colors here and selecting the white circle with the blue line through it. It will remove a color um, from your stroke or your fill. And then I'm going to click on my fill again and I'm just going to update the color so it's something that's easy to see. And then I'm going to take my Apple Pencil and I'm just going to drag across my artboard here to make a shape. And then what's nice is if you add your finger to um, the screen, it'll help you create a perfect shape so it's all in proportion. And then I'll resize this by just pulling in the corners and then I can tap on it and move it by selecting my move tool, which is that white arrow there and I can just move it around. And then what's nice, I'm gonna zoom in. What you'll see is if we select this little node arrow underneath our move tool, you'll be able to get the options to adjust your nodes within your shape. So it'll allow me to decrease or increase the angle of the petals here. 
We'll also be utilizing the pen tool a lot. The pen tool takes some um, time to get used to, but um, once you get used to it, you can do a lot with it. So what I suggest we do is update our color here. We're gonna tap out of this shape by just, uh, by just selecting our move tool, tapping on it, and then tapping outside of it. And then what we'll do is we'll go into our color studio here again, and we're gonna turn off the color in our fill by selecting that white circle with the blue line through it, and then we're gonna tap on our stroke, and we're gonna select the color um, select a color from our color wheel or you can just select your most recent color so that it matches what you already have on your artboard and then we're going to select our pen tool and with the pen tool you're working with uh, bezier curves and line segments so if you tap on one point and then you tap on another it's going to create a line for you um, and what you'll notice is at the very bottom you'll have these options for your pen mode um, you'll have these options for different modes. So currently we have it as a pen mode, but you can change it to line, to smart, to polygon. Um, I'm just gonna keep it at pen. And then you can also adjust your width so it's not so thick. And then you can select edit mode and it'll allow you to edit the shape. And then if we continue to tap and add additional lines, we'll tap on our last point and then add an additional line and if we without lifting your pen we can just drag and we can start creating some of those bezier curves and you'll notice that there's these kind of like arms that shoot out of our curve here and we can select our node tool and adjust those arms and adjust that curve so a good way to do that is just um, to play around with it so you can get used to the placements of your curves and your shapes overall but it gives you a lot of ability, um, especially if you like to do artwork um, and you like the idea of vectorizing. Basically, you'll utilize your pen tool to vectorize any digital artwork that you might have created. You can utilize the node tools to adjust those lines, and then you could also utilize some of these additional tools with the node tool, within the node tool to like smooth things out um, and just like go in and be more detailed with what you're doing and creating. But that's, I really like the the flexibility of the pen tool because I'm able to go in and really fine tune things to get it exactly the way I would want it. All right, so that is the pen tool. Next, I want to highlight um, how we can add text, which is probably one of the main things that we'll be utilizing within our layouts is adding text to these pages. So if you go to the bottom um, on the left-hand side in our tools here, you'll see um, our text tool. So there are two types. There's the art text tool, which is what is popping up for me first. And then there's also the frame text tool. The art text tool just allows you um, to add text without any parameters. So if I kept typing, if I click on the area, I select that little A and then hit my keyboard, I can just type and it will continue typing until infinity, um, unless I resize this and adjust it. Or we can select our frame text tool. And this basically allows us to create a frame and then whatever text we put in will be bound to the size of that frame. So I'm going to increase the size of my font here. And then I'm just going to type in here as well. And what you see is that the text stays within this bounding box instead of just going on for infinity. So this is a really helpful tool if you have a specific parameters that you want to keep your text to. Um, I always prefer using the frame text tool, um, especially when I'm working in layouts like this, just so that everything kind of has its own little place. So while we're working with text, what's nice is that we can also um, undo things. So say 
I'm, I'm gonna highlight something by taking my Apple Pencil and dragging across it, and then I can delete it. But say I want it that back, I can just take two fingers, tap, and it will undo it and bring back what I was working on. Um, but I'm just gonna delete all of this because we don't need all of it, all of my gibberish. And what we're gonna do is resize our frame as well so that it fits around the word hello. And then I'm gonna highlight it by double tapping it. You could also triple tap if you need to. And this will allow me to resize if I need it to. And then also I can adjust my color. So once it's highlighted, I'm gonna tap my keyboard to kind of move it out of the way. And then I'm gonna to go to my color studio over here on the right hand side. Currently the color is black, but I'm gonna turn it to that pink by just clicking on my recents. But you could also utilize your color wheel and adjust it as you'd like um, to find a color that you like. Or you can tap where it says color wheel and you can utilize your sliders. Or we can go back into our color swatches all the way at the bottom. You'll see it says swatches. We click on that. We can select from the swatches that are preloaded in the system. Or you can go into, um, if you have Pantone, I have the Pantone systems here as well and we can select from that as well. So basically, any of the Pantone colors that I have in my coded or uncoded options, I'll have access to those colors here as well. I'm gonna select my Pantone coded because that is the color guide that I have with me right now. I can find a color in my guide here, and then I can go into my color system here um, right now, I have it as just the color grid, but if you tap on that little four square there, it'll give you your Pantone color codes. And it just makes things really easy for color matching and things like that, especially if you're working on client work. You can also utilize um, the pencil tool. Uh, this I use a lot when I am working on digital art. Um, you can just select the pencil tool and you can draw with it. Um, but what's nice is that the pencil tool is basically a vector tool and you're able to edit your nodes just like what you were able to do with the pencil tool. And it just makes things really simple and easy. Um, I like to use this again. If I add in artwork, I can trace over it and then revise. Um, and then you could also select sculpt while you're working with this and this allows you to add additional segments to the work that you're already doing. So say I'm drawing something and I stop, but I wanted to keep adding to this piece. Um, it doesn't create a brand new line segment. It just adds to the segment that we're already working within. And then we also have the vector brush tool. Again, it's similar to the pen tool and the vector tool because you are creating with line segments and Bezier curves. But what's nice with the vector brush tool is once you select it and then you go to the right hand side and select our brush studio, we have tons of options that give us a more traditional feel to our brushes. So if we select acrylics and select dry basic acrylic, um, you'll get these acrylic kind of shapes and um, effects with the brush. You can also resize it on the very bottom here. You can adjust the width. You can adjust the opacity. You can also add a controller, which basically just is like a stabilizer. And then if we tap where it says acrylics, we have a pop-up that gives you all the other options we have here. So you could select inks, gouaches, dry media, pens, pencils. So we can select the classic HB pencil and it gives you that nice kind of um, grainy texture effect that you would get with a traditional pencil. Only you're creating a vector line that you can go in with your node tool and edit.